The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 456 Things Best Unstudied. And that's about what happened, Fully finished, leaning against a wall beside Niala, the great golden suit of armor watching with as much expression as it could. I don't think either of us are ever going back to Ice Reach to live out our lives, but the crazy scientist that kicked you out of your body and stole it for himself is probably still out there. Doesn't have to be tonight, or tomorrow, or maybe even this year, but someday we're going to find him, make him dead like he belongs, and put you back together for real this time. Navare, Niala agreed. That name doesn't really mean anything to me. I'm sorry. Do you think we could take it slow first, though? I feel like I should spend more time learning about the world and deciding what I want to do, instead of just getting up and running after the first long-term goal I hear about. I still have to get used to the fact that I'm a suit of armor for one. It feels strange. I can tell this isn't how my body was supposed to be. Yep, Valé stretched and got up. First things first, I probably gotta get you explained to the rest of my friends. It's night out, so we'll probably have to wait for morning to go exploring. Niala took two clunky steps after her. I like the night. Valé nodded at the cable plugged into her back. Yeah, but Sparky said you gotta charge up before you can move around, or else you'll just freeze and I'd have to carry you. you gotta wait until you're topped off. Right, Niala murmured, sounding unenthused. I'm stuck here, aren't I? Well, Valé fidgeted, suddenly uncomfortable with her own freedom. I mean, I have to sleep too, and you can move around when you're not charging. Look, I've seen that armor move before. You're a lot more agile than you look. And worst case, I can just carry you or something. Uh, she put on a smile she hoped was cheery. I could at least unbar this door if you want to meet my friends. Okay. Niala paced, twisting her legs and trying to get a better feel for their joints in motion. That sounds like as good a first step as any. Valet pushed the door open and trotted through. Maple and Shinespark were further above, but Gerardo and Slipstream sat in the dining hall, chatting amicably as Starlight looked on, bored. All three looked up when she approached, and Slipstream gave a hopeful salute. It was rather noisy in there, Gerardo remarked, concern edging into his casual tone of voice. We tried not to pry, but it sounds as though something momentous must have occurred. Is it any of our business? Did the armor work? Starlight asked, being much more direct. Yeah, Valise said, suddenly hesitating. She's kind of tied to a power cable, though. Uh, she pointed behind herself with a wing. Introductions? Nearly half an hour later, everyone sensed the usually absent jam jars had met Niala, exchanged amicable words, and was updated on the situation enough to know that power was a concern, Shinespark would be working on it, and that the two were sisters and Niala being disembodied involved a thieving scientist from their Yakyakistani hometown. Gerardo bowed his head, and Slipstream briefly folded her ears, but Starlight stomped off up the stairs, disappearing in a huff. She burst out onto the ship deck, far better lit from the open-faced commerce building than it would normally be during the night. The only pony there was Maple, standing at the railing and watching the river flow by, and completely by instinct, Starlight stalked up to her, sat down and pouted, joining her and staring at the dark water. You sound upset, Maple commented, putting a forehoof on Starlight's shoulders. Something about Valet's sister? I guess Yakyakistan isn't a place I want to go to anytime soon, even if it weren't for everything Herman did in Ironridge, Starlight sulked, slumping. If a pony can get turned into a suit of armor against her will? Maple gently stroked her. It sounds like getting disembodied was the part that happened against her will. Being put in Brain's old armor is just a step on the road to being normal again. Valacia was relieved that it worked, and once Niala understands more of what happened, I think she will be too. Starlight glanced behind herself at a bare lilac flags. Talk about forcing someone to change who they are against their will. You know, I've been thinking about that, Maple hummed. Valet didn't even need a second to recognize her sister after Shinesburg turned the armor on, even though every physical part of her was gone. No skin, no bones, no heart or lungs or stomach or even brain. But it was still her. But when Valet was telling up about Moonglass for the very first time, she made it sound like once you use it, you aren't you anymore. Not unless you're white chocolate and it doesn't stay. I wonder what it really is that makes you you and not someone else. Ugh, 
Charlotte didn't need to wonder. She'd always known she would be able to tell who she was and that she had to protect that, but if Mabel asked, she also knew she wouldn't be able to put it into words. It makes me think about what a person is, Mabel went on. Cutie marks obviously have something to do with it, because the moment Shinespark put a cutie mark in that armor, it became Valet's sister. But what about creatures who don't have cutie marks at all, like yaks and griffins? And ponies aren't born with theirs. Plenty never even get them. And ponies like Shinespark, who remove theirs and seal it somewhere else, still remain themselves too. But Valet also said if you remove a bad ponies, that's all there is to it, and then they're gone. She touched the air with a hoof, the water still rippling below. Don't you wonder what it is or how it works? There's so many small rules with tiny exceptions, but I can't see how they come together in a whole. Mm, Starlight frowned. No, I don't wonder. You're not supposed to mess with who someone is, so why would you need to understand how it works? It's not something that should have a meaning behind it anyway. It's something that just should be. Maple's muzzle touched her ear. Even to do things like this? Whatever Shinespark understands allows her to bring back Valet's sister. Mm, Sterling grimaced and said nothing. And you too, Maple whispered. I don't remember that last night in the Skyport very well, but I did something and carried you with my cutie mark after you used the Harmony Extractor so that I could get you to the Crystal Palace and the Flame there could keep you alive. I don't understand exactly how that worked either, but it was definitely good. What if we were ever in a situation like that again? I'm curious, Starlight. I doubt I'll ever be a scientist, but knowing things like this has saved lives, and who knows what else it could do. Aren't you? I don't want it to work that way, Starlight protested uselessly. It shouldn't. Why does this have to be something ponies need to know? It's not fair. Is it fair to Niala to get a chance at life again when she unfairly lost it earlier? Maple murmured, holding her softly. I hope it is. It wouldn't be necessary if everyone had left her alone in the first place, Starlight sniffed. <laughs> How about we talk about this morning bed, Mabel suggested. Or not, and just go to sleep? I've been out here for a while, and I'm getting a little chilly. Starlight gave no resistance, and the two wandered back below decks, the ship gently bobbing in the river. End of chapter 456